All right, so here we have this function that we were working on. We found the p over q, and it's a lot of numbers. What we need to do ultimately for this problem is find all of the zeros, but we have to do it manually. All right, now, we, I am going to let you guys use your calculator as a guide, all right? Rather than plugging these in or doing synthetic division until you find the first one that gives you a zero, I'm going to let you use your calculator as a guide. So let's plug this function into the calculator. All right? It's okay. So here we go. We go to y1, press, press y equals, and I'm going to plug this equation in there. So I have 2x. Now, for the cube button, there is a math button here. It's the third one down from the left. 3. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. 2x cubed. Minus 5, again that variable button x, and the square button is again halfway down in the left hand column, minus 28x plus 15. x squared here, all right, plus 15. Now, hang on, now press this button on the very top row to the right to graph. Okay? All right, so now you graph, okay? Every time it crosses the x-axis, it's a zero, right? So now look here. It crosses the x-axis at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, right? That point is negative 3. So that tells you that negative 3 is going to be a number that's going to give you a 0. So now, I put my calculator off to the side. I'm done with my calculator now. So let go of your calculator for a minute. So remember here in this list, there were all these numbers, and one of them was going to be a 0. We just figured out that negative 3 is a, is a 0. So you take that negative 3, and you're going to do synthetic division with it. See, now this gave you a starting point. I'm not going to use the graphing calculator anymore for this problem. It was just to figure out that point, just to help me cheat a little. So now negative 3, and here I'm going to put in my coefficients 2, negative 5, negative 28, 15. 2 comes down negative 6, negative 11, 33, 5, negative 15, and 0. Okay, good. I got 0. I'm supposed to get 0. Okay? All right, now, yes. What we're doing, remember what we were doing before. From here, I get x minus negative 3, and that's going to be x plus 3. And from here, I'm going to get my coefficients. So it's going to be, what's the exponent going to be? x squared, right? I started with an x cubed, so now it's an x squared. So it's 2x squared minus 11x plus 5, okay? And I say that that's equal to 0 because I'm going to solve. Okay, now I have x plus 3. I need to factor this blue stuff now. Okay, so it's 2x and x. And I need two numbers that multiply to 5. Well, 5 and 1 should do. So I have minus minus <coughs> 5 and 1. And now let's check. If I do the outer parts, 2 times negative 5x, what does that give me? Negative 10x. And in the middle, negative x, does that add to negative 11x? Yes. yes, so this is the correct factoring. 
equals zero. Now, from here, I get x equals three, negative three. Okay, I need to solve for x at the end of the day. So you set each one equal to zero. So x plus three equals zero. 2x minus 1 equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0, negative 3, 1 half, and 5. And if you notice, all of those are rational numbers, right? And all of those are in that list of p over q that we had found, okay? So this is how we're going to do it. So do you see now how, how you're going to use, once you find your p and q, you're going to use your calculator as a, as a crutch, sort of, to get you that first point, and then after that, it all unravels. Nobody sits there, and we don't spend time doing, you know, plugging things in one by one by one. This is the step. This is what we're getting to, okay? Now, tomorrow in class, you're going to have a worksheet, and you're going to be doing this stuff, okay? Yes, yes. Okay, so here is, all right. Um, here's something else now. It's called Descartes' Rule of Signs. All right? Descartes was a French philosopher slash mathematician. He's the guy who said, I think, therefore I am, if you've heard it. Right. Anyways. So he figured out a way to figure out how many positive zeros a function has, how many negative zeros, and how many imaginary zeros. All right? So together, all right, together, a function can have positive negative, and imaginary zeros. Now, take a look at example A. What's the degree of that function? What's the highest exponent? The highest exponent is 4. It means that function has got to have a total of 4 zeros. Now, all 4 could be real. Some could be real. Some could be imaginary. Right? And so with Descartes' rule of signs, we're going to figure out exactly how many there are. Okay. This doesn't tell you what the zeros are. It tells you how many positive and how many negative and how many imaginary there are. Okay? Four in total. Now, here's what you do. You take f of x. You see how, how many terms does f of x have? There is an x to the 4. There is a negative 3x cubed. There is a negative 5x squared. In total, there are 5. Some of those are positive, some of those are negative. What you're going to do is you're going to see how many times the sign alternates between the terms. So for example, look at the first one, x to the 4. Is that positive or negative? Positive. positive. What about the second one? Negative. negative. So here, the sign changes from positive to negative. Is there another case where it changes between positive and negative any which way? Negative 5 to the, okay, so it changes twice, okay? Now, <clears throat> that means the number of positive zeros can be a maximum of 2, or, now here is the funny little thing with this rule. Now you have to keep subtracting increments of 2. So from 2, what happens if you subtract 2? You get 0. So there are either 2 or 0 positive solutions. What would have happened if instead of 2 times, the sign changed 5 times? Then what would you have done? Five. You subtract 2, so it would have been 5 or 3, 5 or 3 or 1, and it stops there because you can't take up any more zeros. The 2 is from how many times? And then you keep taking off increments of 2. So 2 or 0. Never, no. All right, now, how about the number of negative ones? Okay, so this was f of x. Now I need to plug in. Now I need to take f of negative x. <clears throat> okay? That's just Descartes' rule. Now I need to plug negative x for all the x's. Okay, so let's do this. Two times, I'm going to plug in a negative x to the 4. 
minus 3 times negative x to the 3 minus 5 times negative x to the 2 plus 2 times what? negative x plus 7. So we are now looking at f of negative x. The process is you have to change all the x's to negatives and now look at what's going to happen. Where? No, it's f of negative x. This one? Right, because here it's 2x plus 7. All the x's have to become negative. Oh, oh, sorry, okay. All right, so now... Yeah, I'll get there. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, you can't flip the sign to all of them. So, f of negative x. Okay, now look. What happens if you get negative x to the 4? Is that positive or negative? Negative, 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 negative. It's positive x to the 4. All right? What about this one? So, if I have negative 3 times... So this is negative 3, and then that's negative as well. So together they make what? Positive 3x cubed. <clears throat> now here, negative 5 times, what's the blue one going to be? Positive, so it's negative 5x squared, plus or minus 2x, and then plus 7. So that's f of negative x. <clears throat> Let's just compare with f of x. Which one's changed from this to this? Which one's changed? Did x to the 4 change? It's literally just the reverse. The ones that switch are the reverse. Not all of them. Which one's switch sign? Did x to the 4 switch signs? No. no. Did x to the 3 change signs? Yes. Did 2 change signs? No. Did x to the 1 change signs? So what I'm doing now is I'm... Okay, I'm comparing between this and this, between the top and the bottom. Positive x to the 4, positive x yeah. to the 4. It didn't change yeah, sign. But the two okay, yeah, but the two changed. Because it's positive, now it's yeah, positive. Right. Right. No, uh, sorry, I was talking about the x squared, that too. Uh, yeah. oh, no, okay, true. so this doesn't change sign. What about x to the 1? Yeah. That changes sign. So which one changed sign? Which exponent changed sign? The odd All the odd ones changed signs. All the odd exponents change signs, but the even exponents don't change signs. That, that's how it always is. Okay? So odd exponents change signs. Now, let's see. Let's see what we did before. All right, so positive, positive. Here it goes from positive to negative. Negative, negative. Here it goes from negative to positive, right? So how many times does that happen? Four. Two. So number of negative, how many? Two or zero. Mm-hmm. Now I'm looking like linearly, horizontally, where does their ch sign change? X to the 4 stayed X to the 4. Okay, so now look at Oregon. We're going to... We're going to create a chart now. Okay, we're going to we're going to make a chart. All right? Positive, negative, and imaginary. All right. So I can have two positive or zero positive. I can have two negative or zero negative. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up with all of the combinations. All right. How many total zeros am I supposed to have? Four. Okay. So I can have either two positive or zero positive. Right? Imaginary. Positive, negative, imaginary. 
So I can either have two positive or zero positive. Now, how many negative? Okay. So suppose I have two positives, right? How many negatives can I have? Either two or zero. So I can have either two or zero negatives. Okay. Now, let's go to the bottom. If I have zero positive, how many negative can I have? Either two or zero. Now, let's take each of the horizontal rows. Suppose I had two positive and two negative. How many does that leave for imaginary? Zero. Suppose I have two positive and zero negative. How much for imaginary? Two. If I have zero positive, two negative, two for imaginary. Zero positive, zero negative, four for imaginary. Okay. That's the answer. This chart is the answer. Okay? Okay, so you have negative 11x to the 4, 20x cubed, and so on and so forth. So we have to see, first of all, for the number of positive, okay, how many times horizontally there is a sign change? So there is a sign change here, here, and here. So for the number of positive zeros, it's either three or what? Three or, we have to go down by increments of two. So three or one. That's what Descartes said. So once, if you see him ever, you can ask him. But it goes down by twos. So for the number of negative ones, I need to do f of negative x. Okay. Let's do the shortcut for this, okay? The first one, is the exponent odd or even? Even. Even, so it stays as it is. The second one, is the exponent odd or even? Odd, odd so I flip the sign. The next one, odd or even? Even, even. keep the sign. The next one, odd or even? Odd, odd. flip the sign. And the number just always stays as is. Okay? So now, how many times is there a shift in sign? One? Just one. So number of negative? Just one. Because there isn't enough to take out increments. It has to be one. Wait, that's it? I may have flipped it three times, but once I'm done, now I scan this and I say, in this line, how many times does the sign change? And that only happens yeah. once. So, like, if it goes from a negative to a positive, uh -huh. that does mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. So, if it goes, like, negative to positive to negative to positive, that's twice. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, now, positive... Negative right, imaginary. Now, how many does each row have to add up to in this case? Four. Four. Okay, so now. No, because if it's one, there isn't enough for you to take out an increment of two. So it's just one. There isn't an, I, another option. Okay, so you're going to do the chart with this. So it's either three matching up with one, and then how many do you have left? Zero. Or it's one matching up with one, right? And how many do you have left? Two. Wait, that's it? It doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. You don't do anything else. Okay, now. Okay, so here's one other thing. Um, imaginary numbers always come in pairs, all right? Imaginary always come in pair. 
Yes. So these, this last column can never be an odd number. You can never have three imaginary numbers or one. It's either a zero or two or four or six or a hundred. Okay? The, the other numbers have no limit. The imaginary numbers are always even. The imaginary numbers, there's always an even number of imaginaries. Well, they always come in pairs. More than four normally, or you know, I, no, I mean, we, we normally the highest exponent we'll deal with is like a five, maybe a six, but four are, is very common. Okay, so fundamental theorem of algebra is exactly what you, you've known all along. If whatever the degree is, whoops, whatever the degree of a function is, it has exactly that many zeros. All right? You, you've known all along. It hasn't been a secret. All right? Also, but that also means whatever the degree is, it also has that many linear uh, factors. So whatever the degree is, it has n linear factors. Okay? So if there are four zeros, there can be four factors. If there are three zeros, there can be three factors. All right. All right, we're going to do one more. This one. Um, okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to factor this. <coughs> and it says to write it as a product of linear and irreducible quadratic factors. Oh my God, that is such a mouthful. You know what that means? Basically a quadratic equation that you can't factor. That's what it means. So let's just try to factor this. Can we do P over Q for this? Yes, you can. Huh? Well, you'll see. Yeah, there, there's, there's always a way. Okay, so P is plus or minus, right? What are the factors of 24 these days? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. Is that it? And then Q is plus or minus 1. So what's P over Q? It's all of those, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. All right. So now I need to factor it. I need to factor this. All right. So you know what I'm going to do first, right? Is I'm going to graph it. Okay? Because I want to do the whole synthetic division business, but I want to cheat a little. So let's see where I can get a starting point. So x to the power of 5 plus x to the power of 4 minus 13x cubed, right Dylan? Minus 23x cubed uh, squared minus 14x, is this, am I doing this right? Why? Uh, very top, very left. Um, okay, let's graph. I'm just looking for one of the zeros somewhere. Somewhere, ooh, there is one. Wait, you plug in that entire equation? Yes, I plugged in the entire equation. So did I do it right? X to the 5. Oh, here, I made a mistake here. This is supposed to be a plus. Does that look? Okay. So it looks like there is a 0 at x equals 2. Yes? Or... Sure. No, because those are all the imaginaries and all that, which don't, um, which don't uh, graph. Okay. So what what did we say? Did we say two? Oh no, that's wrong again. Okay, so minus. Minus, minus, okay, so now finally, what, it was there, it was there, okay, so it looks like it's a 3 now, is that what it looks like, all right, let's try the 3, One, two, three, four. you know what happened, I'm, I'm just trying to rush, okay, 
Okay, so now we have 1, 1, negative 13, negative 23, negative 14, negative 24. All right, so I have a 1, 4, 5, 20, 7, 28, 5, 20, oh, sorry, 6, 24, 0. All right, so yes, that one works. X5, X4. Okay. Oh, all the answers. So, um, so what is this? X minus 4. <laughs> X to the 4 plus 5X cubed plus 7X squared plus 5x, plus 6, right?